the state doesn't have to do this. So that's the, that's the idea of the audit. Uh, it's the state education agency. That might, might not be a, a great entity here, but it's, that's the way the law is written. Um, okay, so uh, high schools, the states or districts can choose to offer, they don't have to offer, uh, they don't have to give a state standardized assessment tied to their standards. They can give the ACT or the SAT or some other to be determined um, national assessment. I think this is, uh, there's a couple of things going on here. One of them is in reaction to the fact that a lot of uh, parents and students don't necessarily think those high school language arts and math state standardized tests are all that useful, but uh, the SAT and the ACT generally are viewed uh, by families as useful. Um, there's a, this probably didn't need to be said, but it's good that it is said in the law that states can, states do have the authority to limit the amount of time um, that students spend taking tests. Um, and then, this is a small thing, but I think we hope that it'll be expanded um, when other, uh, um, other things like this become apparent. So right now, the law says that states don't have to double test uh, eighth grade students who are taking a higher level math class. Uh, they don't have to take the, the eighth grade math test, the like regular eighth grade math test, and the, the geometry test or the algebra two test or whatever else they're taking. So it's just an acknowledgement that there is too much testing. We don't need to be duplicating these things. Um, there were a lot of mandates coming from Washington that did not make sense for the rest of, for anywhere else in the country. Uh, <clears throat> the new accountability system, what is written into the law now is very different from what was written in No Child Left Behind. Um, as you recall, in No Child Left Behind, uh, there was a mandate around what was called ad adequate yearly progress, which um, every state had to uh, meet proficient, every school and every subgroup of students in a school had to meet proficiency targets in English language arts and math every year, and those got increasingly um, higher. And then there was a series of cascading sanctions once you didn't make the grade there. Um, so now the new accountability system that's written into law, and this is really where the opportunity is for every state to craft their own system. Uh, the things that have to be included in the accountability system are listed. You do have to have uh, test scores from English language arts and math. Uh, for elementary school, another academic measure has to be included. The way it's written is uh, either student growth, so that could be a test score, or another indicator that is valid, reliable, and statewide. So that's an opportunity to think about other academic indicators. There's a paper in your packet where we, uh, the AFT tries to pull together uh, potential examples of what those could be, um, suggestions for your conversations here. Um, and then high school, you have to include uh, the graduation rate. Uh, a new thing is that English language proficiency has to be included, somehow included in these statewide accountability system. Before that was uh, a separate thing and it really wasn't given any weight at all. It was just kind of hanging out on its own. It's a, an incorporation of that into the system. And then the item that we're really excited about is uh, uh, what we shorthand call the non-academic indicator, but it's a, another indicator of school quality or student success. And then they, the law lists a few examples for example, students, measures of student safety, student engagement, um, or educator engagement. Again, there's something in your packet where we kind of uh, provide uh, potential examples of what these could look like. We're really excited about um, the possibilities here to move away from stand the pressures of standardized testing be being the only way that schools are measured. Um, and having uh, schools focus on these things that are also, as we know, indicators of school quality. Um, I've put up here uh, the requirements that are named in the law around what that, um, how these factors go into the accountability system. And really, uh, the law does not say much more than this about what, how these have to look. It just says that. The first four have to have substantial weight, and then indicator five um, has to 
indicators one through four have to have much greater weight than indicator five. Um, the U.S. Department of Education is in the process of drafting regulations around that. They might try to define what that means and tighten that, what, <laughs> define substantially, define much greater weight uh, for everybody. But right now, the law just says these words. Um, and then the one other thing that uh, is layered on top of this, there is still, there was a No Child Left Behind and there is still now um, a 95% participation requirement. Every school, every district has to assess 95% of their students. Um, uh, but now, and before, under No Child Left Behind, uh, if you didn't get that 95% participation rate, you automatically didn't make AYP, so you automatically were a failing school. Now the state gets to decide, gets to say, how that's factored into the accountability system. So is it a weight, is it a percentage, is it something else that we haven't thought about? Um, and I think that's a, that was one of the last things that, that was uh, worked out when this law was being reauthorized, and I think that's also a, um, a uh, acknowledgement of the uh, parents and student, students opting their kids out of assessments and just being sick of um, how this all was playing out. Uh, quickly on interventions. So also under No Child Left Behind, a, there was a cascading series of interventions. We, there were actually sanctions, really like punishments to schools that weren't making adequate yearly progress. Um, under this law, there are no uh, named interventions or sanctions. What is, so there's no saying that schools have to be closed, there's no nothing saying schools have to be turned over to a charter school. Um, what, it do, what the law does say is that using this state-defined designed accountability system, which included all those factors from the last slide, um, the state has to identify schools at least once every three years. So again, not every year, so there's a little bit of relief from pressure of testing. Um, and then uh, starting in the 2017-18 school year, there's three groups of schools that have to be identified using this accountability system. The first one is a, a bottom 5% uh, of schools. The next one is any school that has a graduation rate of less than 67%. Um, across the, there's data across the country that's about 1,200 schools throughout the country. Um, and then sort of the squishier category is um, after a number of years of schools not schools receiving what the law calls targeted intervention and support and not improving, um, then these schools get kicked into this group of uh, what's called schools identified for comprehensive support and improvement. So that, is, so this is all defined at the state, what, what comprehensive support and improvement looks like, what targeted and, um, support and improvement looks like, is really defined at the state and local level, and that's an opportunity. Community schools, you know, more professional development, good interventions for English learners, all of those things. It's also a, um, there's a lot of, there's a trap, there's a peril there that people will come in and say a great intervention is vouchers or a great intervention is turning the school over to charter schools. So we just want to make sure that folks are aware this law has a lot of opportunities, but uh, the lack of prescription is not um, always the, the easiest thing. This is my last slide. So the question we get asked most often is uh, what is, when is all of this happening? When do we have to um, have all of this together? Uh, the current school year, which is just about over, everything stayed the same for the most part. Uh, waivers, most states, including Texas, had a waiver from um, a lot of the requirements of No Child Left Behind. Uh, but in exchange for those waivers, had to promise to do other things. Those waivers officially end, as per the law, in August 2016. Uh, but... <laughs> The next school year, almost everything stays the same because uh, in the 2017-18 school year is when the law says those accountability systems and the intervention systems have to be up and running. So that's the really um, ready to go year. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on in Washington only because it affects uh, the 2017-18 school year. This is the year, 2016, when the US Department of Education puts in place um, the regulations governing the accountability systems, the intervention systems, and lots of other parts of the law. Uh, so 
In March and April, there was something called negotiated rulemaking where they tried to hammer out some parts of um, rules around assessments. Any day now, really this week or next week, we expect draft regulations from the Department of Education on what the accountability system, the rules around the accountability systems and what those have to look like. That's important uh, for a number of reasons, including they're going to try to define what substantial must be, what uh, much greater weight must be, what that 95% requirement, how that has to um, fit into the accountability system. We'll be commenting, I think a lot of folks in this room will be commenting through various organizations. Um, but what that means is those, uh, those regulations likely won't be finalized until December 2016, December of this year. Um, which means for timelines, the, the U.S. Department of Education will likely require states to submit their plans around these accountability and intervention systems uh, spring, in spring of 2017 so that they are ready to go and be implement, and approved and implemented for use in the 2017-18 school year. Um, Put it out there, layering on top of that, we'll have a new presidential administration that's going to be approving these plans. Uh, so there will be a little, there will be some hairiness there. Um, but that's all to say that now is exactly the time to be thinking about what the accountability and intervention systems um, can and should look like and 